This is Janet Diane Moyes Wardlow. Welcome to the Expansions News Podcast for the first week in May. And as you know, by the time you watch this, Stuart will have arrived safely in Japan. So just in case, I don't want you to forget what he looks like. I moved this over so he can sit here and be thinking about what it is that he should be saying. Or, of course, since I'm his handler, it's possible that maybe he could do a little talking on his own. But we'll see. Anyway, back to me. I could be the pretty one this week because he's not here to remind you that he's the pretty one. So, I want to tell you about what's going on in the news this week, or rather what's not going on in the news this week, because, as we have predicted, and that's in quotes, the Malaysian Airlines story, where we're not really hearing anything about that, Ukraine is kind of slowly fading out of the news, and even the South Korean ferry stories are all practically non-existent, on the internet or not really out there at all. Still a, heart, a few heartbreaking ones going on about the families. Of course, we express our deepest condolences. But, you know, watch for things to kind of slow down a little bit while whatever else they want you to focus on, they bring up to your attention. So, that being said, I want to uh, talk to you about a few interesting stories that came across my desk this week. See what you think about it. For example, now, there is apparently a new NASA space suit called the Z-2. And according to the article that came across my desk, it says that the public voted on the type of look. Now, I thought this was so odd. NASA does not let the public vote on anything. But now they have decided that this is how the, the space suit will look. And therefore, they're going to move on to the vacuum chamber, it says and rocky Martian surface tests are expected to commence this fall. Now all this is, apparently they had to stop their work until you voted on the type of spacesuit that you like the look of. So again, that's beyond me. You figure that one out. What would you say to that, Stuart? We don't know. Okay, now there was a blue UFO spotted over the Netherlands. Now of course, the UFO stories are obviously not going to go away, but this particular one was in the middle of the afternoon and was absolutely all over the internet and of course on conventional news and nobody talking about what it was or it wasn't just again keeping that programming and also that particular frequency opened for the public. Moving along, Russia now is announcing plans to get to Mars. Remember last podcast I mentioned to you that Russia was planning to basically stake the Mars stake out the moon and claim that for itself. Now they're going to get to Mars, and of course they want to do it earlier than the U.S., so now supposedly there's a race to get to the Red Planet, and again, it really, again, silly stuff to keep the public entertained, I guess. And now the interesting tag-along line to this, that getting to Mars is now one quote that is vital for the success of the human race. Mm -hmm. Now, they've got everybody wrapped around their little finger, of course. And speaking of a little finger, there is a credit card movement on to have you use body parts. And notice the word body parts was used specifically in this article, even though they refer to your hand. They're saying that that is going to become more common to identify you with. And if they use your hand, apparently each person has a specific set of veins that is unique to you. So now, in order to stop security card or I'm sorry, credit card security breaches, they are going to have you swipe the, your palm because, of course, now they've been through identity theft and everybody's up in arms about this, that, and the other thing. So now, of course, you're going to do body parts. So I guess they're going to start with your palm and who knows what else. Oh, I'm, you're making me blush, Janet. Don't talk about that. What are you going to say next? Never know what's going to come out of Stuart's mouth, do you? All right, on to the next thing. Portland, Maine. There is a robbery defendant who, get this one, he is absolutely being forced to represent himself because he was stripped of his constitutional right to an attorney. Now, here in the U.S., this is a big thing because in the U.S., if you are arrested, God forbid, you have the constitutional right to an attorney. This particular gentleman in Portland, Maine, let me find his name for you, not the last name. Okay, Nisbet is all I've got, apparently, according to this article. Anyway, he apparently offended five court-appointed attorneys 
So therefore the justice, uh, Thomas Warren, ruled that this man had effectively forfeited the right to a lawyer through his actions. Now, this is unprecedented, and apparently uh, there are other attorneys who are agreeing that this uh, is unprecedented because a uh, court-appointed attorney is a constitutional right. Nisbet stood up before the judge, before the jurors arrived, and said, quote, I am representing myself over my objection, and I am only doing this under duress in this crazy situation, unquote. So again, they're setting up something to take away the constitutional rights, and people are going to say, well, he obviously did something because he is upsetting the judge. Now, interestingly enough, this is happening in 2014, and he has been in the Cumberland County Jail for nearly three years since he was charged with wielding a knife during a convenience store robbery in South Portland, Maine, in July of 2011. So for something like this, he's losing his constitutional rights, so make note of this. And speaking of what's going on here in the U.S., and this is something that I didn't know about, and of course many of you around the globe won't, but it will be of interest to those of you in the U.S., that here in the U.S., in Minneapolis, the Minneapolis City Council voted to rename Columbus Day, which is typically in October, to Indigenous Peoples Day. Now this supposedly is to honor Native American culture. Now, the thing that I did not know is it said that apparently there are four states in the U.S. that do not recognize Columbus Day, including South Dakota, as well as Hawaii, Alaska, and Oregon. So they do not recognize Columbus Day at all, and of course people are saying, why should we, because he didn't even make it into the continental United States. And of course, as we all know, the Vikings and people before that, if you read the True World History book, discovered America, or actually, they've been here, so what was there to discover? I don't know. Okay, now, this last, this is my last story, almost my last story, but this one is for you, Stuart. Oh my gosh, let me cover my eyes. Okay, don't, or maybe it should be your ears. I'm not sure. I only have one hand available. We'll do eyes at this time. Cover his eyes. All right, Natasha Blasik. Now, have any of you ever heard of her? I have not. However, she is a Ukrainian-born actress. And this woman claims to have had ghost sex. That's right, ghost sex. Oh my God, Janet. Yes, that's right, Stuart, ghost sex. Not only once, but twice. Apparently, it gave her support, comfort, and love. And it did answer questions for her that something else is out there. Like, what drugs was this lady on, right? And not only her, but apparently there are other people who've had ghost sex. And if you have to, please write in and tell us about it. Anyway, this one, apparently, uh, Keisha, I guess all of you know who she is, or most of you are supposed to know because she's a famous singer. She spoke to Ryan Seacrest, and again, you're supposed to know who that person is too, that she had a randy romp with a male ghost, and that helped her give birth to her new song called Supernatural. Quote, it's about experiences with the supernatural, but in a sexy way. Unquote, she told Seacrest. Quote, I had a couple of experiences with the supernatural. I don't know his name. He was a ghost. I'm very open to it. Unquote. Now, of course, as you know, this is keeping you open to New World religion and astral entities out there. Now, the interesting thing is, is that both of these ladies happen to say that it was warm and comforting and wonderful. However, there is skepticism from paranormal experts who say that ghosts don't feel warm, that if you go and if, if, the, if you watch all the ghost hunter television shows out there, it says that you will feel cold, not warm, and that there is a pressure and even penetration, but not warmth, and the room is always very cold, but not warm. I've said that several times now. So anyway, ghost sex, that's leading you into astral entity sex. So while that, again, that's going to sound very strange to you right now, all the things I've been telling you about, you guys have been watching it come true. And the last thing, this is my last story, which I found very strange, and once I found it, I could not find it again. But there is a Geico ad here in the U.S., and Geico has been known for many years for its little ads with a lizard that pops up and talks about you know, getting a good insurance rate. This particular guy had a live snake, a large one, wrapped around his arm and his neck in this Geico ad. And it was before a story I was going to watch. Nothing was said about the snake. It just talked about the insurance rates and how much you could save. And then it went on into the story. So when I clicked back to see if I could find the ad, I could not. I thought that was interesting. Whether or not we'll see it again, I'm surmising we will. 
but keep your eyes open because it is more about triggering and imprinting and everything reptilian, obviously. So, that's the news. That's all you have, Janet? Yes, that's all I have today. Oh my gosh, my ears are burning. Yes, I know they are, but it will be okay. All right, now, by the way, did you know you're in Japan? I am. Yes, you're in Japan. Yes, he's in Japan, guys, that's right. So if you're in Japan, you can go with him on his tour up to the tomb of Jesus' grandson in Japan. And also, he is going to be speaking to some people there who say that they are the descendants of Jesus. So we'll see what happens. And that they have artifacts. We will see what he reports back. In June 6, 7, and 8, Stuart will be in New York City. He will be doing personal consultations. He will be giving a free lecture, and he will be having a three-hour introductory workshop on hyperspace basics. So, if you want to see Stuart for whatever reason, go to New York City, June 6th, 7th, or 8th. But do reserve your space because we already have people registering and they're going fast. They will be gone by the time he leaves, trust me. In August, if you want to enjoy beautiful St. Joseph, which, by the way, has one of the best beaches in the country, for those of you who are not in the know. It's an amazing place in the summer. Look us up on Facebook, and be sure to look at all the beautiful posts we make of downtown St. Joseph. And, of course, we do have people, it is stated, in our secret underground community who live at Cafe Tosi's. And that's all I'm going to say. Anyway, August 8th, 9th, and 10th. We will be having our summer event, which the topic will be communication. We will be teaching you certain things such as toning, which I have not taught in quite a while, and all things to do with communication because you need to be able to effectively communicate inside and outside in order for your outer world to respond properly and correctly. Our annual fall conference, mark this on your calendar, this one is usually our largest one of the year, October 10th, 11th, and 12th. This is everything Oversoul. So this is going to be a stellar event. Usually it is a sold out event. So mark your calendar for that one. And of course we have January 2015, right around the corner, believe it or not, our Hyperspace Oversoul Extravaganza. People are already signing up for that one. That is very small and intimate that we do in a very secret and private location which we only reveal to you once you have signed up and shaved your head. So send in the picture and Patricia, customer support at expansions.com and we will put you in the queue and take a look at that. All right, if you have any intentions of joining our Oversoul Mastermind Group 2015, you must be prepared for that. That will include having taken our Hyperspace Oversoul Extravaganza, and we also have another long list besides, of course, shaving your head and sending in the picture. So be sure you contact Patricia, customer support at expansions.com, and you will be, again, one of those in the know. Isn't that right, Stuart? That's right. Though I should make a lower voice for him. That's right. Is that better, guys? Yes, much better. Okay, I hope you're having fun flying around up in the air looking at all those hyperspace symbols and, of course, UFOs from the air. Of course I am. Don't worry, I'll be back soon, and I will have wonderful news and exciting things to tell you, so please sign up for everything, 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 because you know how I am. It's all over the Internet, so I don't have to tell you. All right, that's true. So, now that you've gotten the true words from myself and, of course, my wonderful husband, I know that your life will change. You do not want to be subject to victim mentality. I've got all kinds of stories out there on my Facebook page about that, a horrible one that happened to a fellow with a dog. So do not fall victim. You need to work on your mind pattern. Um, think of those poor people who drowned in the South Korea ferry. Think of the, whatever happened to those people on the Malaysian airliners, what's going on in, in the Ukraine. You change your mind pattern, you change your world. That's what we're about, helping you empower yourself. So thank you once again for joining me, Janet Diane Morris Wordlow, and me, Stuart, for another edition of our podcast, Expansions.com. Bye-bye now.